Good evening, everybody. Good evening and welcome to Navigate with FFA. Thank you for being a part of this show every week. And thank you for all your encouragements. Please just share the link. Share the link, share the link. So that we can kick off. Thank you, everybody. I love you all so, so much. Let me know where you are joining from. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Good evening, Namibia. Good evening. Thank you. Let me know. I know it's a global family. Good evening. Let me know where you are joining me from. I'm blessed. I'm going forward. I'm reading and studying. My exam starts next week. Ooh, first semester. Ghana, UK. I see you. USA. Australia. Houston. Oh, oh. Thank you. You guys are not sleeping. <laughs> Lagos, Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you. London. Botswana. Oh, my God. Ghana, I'm coming. April 8th. I've been Ghana with First Lady Eunice Addison. Been a city, I've been with London. Thank you for being a part of this tonight. Please invite your friends and let's 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 get something going. Gabon. Wow, 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 wow. Sokoto, Dallas, Victoria Island, Abuja. Thank you. Thank you, my very precious people. It's such an honor to serve you. And I thank all of you that have reached out to me to congratulate me on the various awards. I'm grateful. Japan, Congo, wow, 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 wow. Canada, ooh, ooh, worry, USA, but don't. Thank you all. I appreciate you. Thank you so, so, so very much. Tonight, my opening remark is this. <laughs> please don't burn out don't burn out South Africa I see all of you do not burn out you know we all give Dominican Republic truly appreciate all of you <laughs> I'm trying to start now thank you so very much you see we all give and give we give attention we give love we give money we give our time we give services can okay, yeah thank you and if we're not careful we can become exhausted and burn out cameroon jamaica south africa tanzania oh my god thank you everybody Ota. how do you know you are burning out how do you know you are becoming exhausted number one when you find yourself focusing on the negative every little thing i don't even know I just kind of you know and all that negative number two when you begin to push people away i don't want anybody around me just leave me alone i don't want anyone around me hmm. when you feel overwhelmed you feel buried uganda i'm coming i'm coming by god's grace i'll be with you in April and the last weekend in April I'll be there okay so you see when you feel overwhelmed you feel buried you are burning out when you feel hopeless you are burning out and the reason is you give and give and give and give any car that does not have a brake system is prone to accident please Pause. Pause. You cannot just continue like this. You give to this person and give to that person and give to... You give, 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 give. And you are running on empty. Please take a break. If you are a Christian, for instance, we have what we call a retreat. Just go away. Take some time to pray, yes. Study the Bible, yes. But please see a movie. Eat some popcorn. Have a massage. 
do have your pedicure your manicure relax you are not even praying you know all those kind of revival prayers no you're just lying down on your bed and just loving on yourself and i want you to please understand job chapter 14 verse 7 for there is hope of a tree if it be cut down some of you are overwhelmed you're burning out because you have lost hope you've been so disappointed you have become disillusioned please take a break don't kill yourself don't die that's one thing i want to tell you tonight if you die god forbid life will continue if you are married your spouse will remarry if you have children they will still play games after you are gone they will not kill themselves they will still become what god has ordained them to be your friends may cry a little but they will forget you they'll just be referring to you please don't die please don't kill yourself take it easy once in a while just take a break take a break love on yourself it's very important spoil yourself i just said to myself i cut my hair and every morning i'm washing it and i do you know things that i can just wash that what i say so this is what men enjoy every day you see it's, it's my life it's my choice if people's opinion is all you live for then you're just existing i beg you tonight love on yourself take a break remember i always say you are not el shaddai else you shall die you shall not die in the name of jesus oh thank you thank you yes i got the award thank you you guys are really you're really following me <laughs> thank you so very much so tonight i want us to talk about our health let's talk about our health and i have a very special lady here tonight Her name is olaju moke wonderful wonderful time tonight listening to this lady thank you everybody i receive all the love and the hugs the hey, good evening good evening ma good evening. Good evening, mommy. I really appreciate um, this opportunity. Thank you very much, mommy. I know I've appreciated you in private, but publicly, I want to appreciate you because I know that um, this is a global program. Everybody is looking at us all over the world. So I'm not taking this opportunity for granted at all. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you, mommy. And good evening to all our viewers. Thank you. You're welcome. It's a global family, Jamaica, Japan. I see all of them. Sierra Leone, Mozambique, USA. Oh, I'm sure everybody can can see us and hear us. So you're welcome. Who is Jumoke Aladinola? Can you just tell us a little? We want to meet you. Before we now go into Thank the you lecture. very much, Mommy. Once again, I appreciate this opportunity. And then uh, I say good evening to all our viewers at home. Um, my name is Ola Jumoke, Ola Denola. My friends and people call me Dr. Jumoke. Some people call me Dr. Jumi. So uh, people refer to me, you know, like that. And then um, um, uh, I would just to describe myself as a um, okay i'm a medical doctor and then um i was born about 47 years ago into the family of falano my son name is falano my father is from ekiti state so i'm from ekiti state by origin but uh, i got married to undo to um an undo man so my husband is from undo state and then my mother is 
both from Oshun State and Ondo State as well. My mom is partly Oshun State, Ilesha, and the Ondo State from Ibaraoke. But my father is from Ekiti State. So um, I was um, second to the last born of a family of seven. We are, fast, we are six girls and, and one boy. My father was a retired principal. He's late now. He was formerly a retired parent. So I had my primary school education partly in Ekiti State and later in Ondo State. And my secondary school education was in uh, Ondo State as well. So la later, after my secondary school education, I really had passion to read medicine. I had wanted to be a doctor since I was small. I was passionate about it. I had some of my uncles who are doctors. I had nieces who are doctors. And then my immediate um, elder brother is also a doctor. So the passion has been there. I want to I want to be useful to humanity. When I see people, I feel like, you know, I want to help them. And then I, um, I saw myself, you know, and being able to read. I could read very well without, um, without much stress. So I'm really passionate about it. So, uh, but I couldn't, I couldn't get to uh, read medicine at the first time. So I had an admission to read biochemistry. So I studied biochemistry as my first degree in the university. But I finished with a 2-1. And then I wanted to go back to read medicine at the University of Ibadan. But they asked me to go back and serve first. So my youth service was in Cross River State. So I finished serving and I came back to apply for medicine. So I studied medicine at the University of Ibadan, the prestigious University of Ibadan. So I trained as a medical doctor in the uh, University College Hospital, that is a UCH. And along the line, I got married to my husband. So I've practiced uh, medicine for, I, I, I've practiced medicine for 17 years now. And I have a master's degree in public health from the Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife. I'm presently I'm doing a PhD. I'm, in, I'm doing a PhD in public health as well. And my research area is on, is on childhood vaccination. So that is a, a brief description of who Olajumo Aladdin is. Oh, but yes, mommy. Fantastic. <laughs> and you are currently in England. Um, I always ask this question so that, you know, everybody will know that this person can be traced. He didn't just draw from heaven. This person is just like you. Look at her. She, she wanted something. She didn't have it. Then she had to go back. You see? Look at the journey. This is serious. <laughs> Somebody said you have read all the books. <laughs> thank you. We thank God for you. So I'm going to just let you flow now. We want you to please talk to us about our health. We have males, we have females here, we have Muslims, we have Hindu, we have Christians. Just talk to us about our health because <clears throat> when it comes to health issues, questions like, like what kind of faith do you have? Are you a man or a woman? May not come up. Thank you very much, yes. mommy. Incidentally, part of what I was going to talk about this evening, you have mentioned part of it. I've actually talked about it. Part of um, what I had in my notes is about our mental health, mental health issues. But that is going to come towards the end of this uh, session. So I just want to start... I'm, I'm passionate about preventive medicine because uh, I'm in the field of public health and usually what public health addresses is prevention because we believe that prevention is actually better than cure and is, you know, is more, is cost effective, is better in terms of time management, is better in terms of your resource management, even your in, uh, your, your, your emotion, to manage your emotion, I think prevention is better. So preventive medicine, we tend to talk more about preventive medicine than curative medicine. 
Because if you are able to prevent, most times you don't get into complication. So I'm going to really talk about uh, prevention today by the special grace of God. I pray that uh, the Holy Spirit will lead us as, um, as I move on on this. Then I just want to point out to the fact that most of the medical instructions that we get or medical guidelines that we get, they are very simple. Simple in the, simple in the sense that if we pay attention to them and we are intentional about them, most of the time we don't get into trouble. Most of the time we are able to prevent diseases from coming. Most of the time we are able to prevent complications from, you know, from happening. So, for instance, I, I usually like to give this example. A dentist, because um, like I, I, I visit the, the, the dentist, you know, from time to time for checkups and all that. A dentist is telling you that you should brush your teeth twice a day. You know, it looks, it's very simple. It looks very simple. I'll brush my teeth in the morning. I'll brush it in the night, you know, before I sleep. So it looks very simple, but if you don't give, uh, if you don't pay attention to it, or if you are not intentional about it, you just, you know, you just see the instruction, just going like that without following it. And sometimes when the dentist is telling you that, the dentist has some things at the back of his mind. They know that if you want to sleep in the night and you still have some particles or some residues of food in your mouth, a microorganism can feed on that. And when they feed on that, it can result to tooth decay. It can cause caries in, the te in, in, your, in your teeth. And that can lead to pain in the teeth, toothache, and so on. And if you have experienced a toothache in the past, you know what it means. So, you know, it's just like a simple instruction to follow. And once you follow it, you tend to gain a lot, you know, from it. So the same thing happens too with some other preventive measures that we, that, that, that we do in medicine. For instance, um, you tell somebody, check your blood pressure. Just try as much as possible to check your blood pressure every day and uh, or from time to time. And I can see, you know, a lot of time that we have medical outreaches, that we see people organizing outreaches and so on. You can walk in just into an hospital and tell them to check, you know, your blood pressure and so on. Why do you have to check your, you to check your blood pressure? You are checking your blood pressure because you want to know if the blood pressure is above normal. We usually say that the normal value for your blood pressure is 120, 70. But sometimes the blood pressure can be going out of hand and you may not know until you check. I've seen people with blood pressure of 270, 100, 270, 120 that are walking around as if, you know, as if there is nothing. There was even, a, a, there was an experience I had. A person brought a patient to the hospital. It wasn't the one that was sick. But immediately I finished seeing that patient. The person just said, doctor, I just want to check my own blood pressure too. You can't believe that we ended up admitting him because the blood pressure was very high. I think the blood pressure was over 200 um, systolic. The systolic is the upper value that you get and the diastolic is the lower value that you get. So the blood pressure was very high and eventually we had to admit him. But he was not sick. He was moving around. He was just you know, doing his own until we got to check him. And we discover that the blood pressure is high. So usually people say hypertension is a silent killer. That is most of the time, it doesn't make any noise. It may not even feel like a slight headache if your blood pressure is high. And it can just be going up and going up and going up like that. And usually it targets the vital organs in the body. When the blood pressure is high, it targets the brain. And that is when you see people having, we call it cerebrovascular accident in medicine. That is stroke, the normal stroke that we usually, you know, we refer to. So it can target the head, it can target the brain, it can target the heart and lead to heart failure. The patient can just slump and die. It can, it can target the kidney and cause renal failure. It can lead to 
erectile dysfunction. It can lead to loss of libido. It can lead to, you know, a lot of things. I can keep on mentioning and mentioning, you know, like that. So that is why it's important that we take, you know, the right measure and then we do regular blood pressure check. It's very, very important. As little as it is, it has saved a lot of lives. Then, probably when you take it, and if the blood pressure is, you know, on the on the high, on the high side, make sure you see your doctor. Don't just be complacent about it and say that it's because of stress. I usually say it. Everybody goes through one stress or the other. But the main thing is you are not focusing on that stress because truly it can be a risk factor for a raised blood pressure. We still get to that, you know, as I move on. So don't just say that it's stress that is causing it. Try as much as possible to see your doctor. Try as much as possible to see your ex, you know, the ex um, professional to hear what they will say. Sometimes they can just say, maybe if the pressure is still around 130, 90, they may not start you on drugs immediately. They can just say, um, do some lifestyle modification. What do we mean by that? Maybe they can say, um, try not to live a sedentary life. A sedentary life is a life that is just, you are just there, you are just sitting down, you are not exercising. So they can say, exercise regularly. And I usually tell people, exercise is meant to be refreshing. You do it according to your age and according to your health status. You do what you think, you know, that is suitable for you. It could just be like a brisk walking. It could be like jogging. It could be biking, it could be swimming, depending on what you want and depending on what your doctor has recommended or is recommending for you. So, for instance, a woman that is a post a, a postmenopausal woman, I won't expect a postmenopausal woman to be maybe skipping or be or be jumping because they might be prone to you know some um, a bone fracture or things like that because the bone is very brittle. When a woman gets to a post, uh, gets to a postmenopausal stage. So, what am I trying to say? I'm just trying to say that the type of exercise we do should be based on our age and should be based on maybe our health status as well. But, uh, but um, the truth of the matter is that exercise is very, very good, and it could be a part of the lifestyle modification that your doctor can, you know, can prescribe for you. Then. It could, they, they can ask you to work on what you eat, you know, eat fruits and vegetables, reduce your processed then food that you take, reduce carbonated food, take more water, hydrate yourself very well, and so on and so forth. But as time goes on, they also advise you to keep checking, keep checking the blood pressure, check as interval, so that when it's getting out of hand and it is this time to recommend a particular drug for you. I think it's time, it will be time to do that sometimes to recommend a particular drug for you. And if you're on, on, if you're on a particular drug, please don't joke with your follow-up. See your doctors from time to time. I've seen people that would take the, the sachet of the drug they were given like five, four years ago. They take it to the chemist to buy the same drug all over, over and over again. They won't go for their follow-up. And the essence of the follow-up is for the doctors to review the drug, to know, should I remove it? Should I have more? Should I tell it down? Is it working or is not working? You know, a lot of things goes into the follow-up. When you go for your follow-up, please, if you're on any of these drugs, either antihypertensive drugs or anti-diabetic drugs or any drugs, please make sure you go for your follow-up. Make sure you hear, you know, what the next thing your doctor is saying about it, that is the essence of your follow-up. Then I've talked about checking our blood pressure. Checking our blood sugar too is also very, very important. You know, when you check your blood sugar, when the blood sugar is high, one may be diabetic. And except you check, most of the time you may not know. And diabetes as hypertension to target organs, all the organs that I've mentioned, that is what diabetes targets. It targets the brain, it targets the heart, it targets the kidney, it targets the eyes. Sometimes that's what we call diabetic retinopathy. When it targets the eye, the person can go blind. 
the person might not see again you know then sometimes the person can have some wounds maybe you just sustain a little wound that you think that in few days or in two days the wound will be healed but the wound can just be dead you know throughout all you know for months for years because the blood sugar is high and sometimes when people don't go for checkup when people don't go to check their blood sugar level they may not know you just feel that everything is okay and those organs are being targeted and they are being affected you know from time to time so then even the high let's go for eye check i think um, two days ago or, last, uh, or yesterday was world glaucoma day glaucoma is one of um, you know the eye problems the, it, it's one of the diseases in the high that most of the time it just goes unnoticed until the patient becomes blind until the patient cannot see again but when you go for regular eye check they check what we call the intraocular pressure that is the pre that i will put it like the pressure you know of the highs they check it so there is a particular level you know it has a normal range but when it's getting to when it's getting higher than the normal range the person might be you know getting close to developing glaucoma then there are some other te other tests too other eye tests too that they will you know do in order to like detect that so most of the time if we don't go to check if you don't go for this you know medical checkups we might not know the same thing with our breast examination. If I count that as the most simple, most simple one, because you can just be in your house, you can just sleep on your bed and just, you know, check the breasts, check, you know, for every quadrant of the breast and so on. And in case you notice any lump, I usually tell, don't take it for granted. Don't say that this lump is just there. Let me just leave it. Make sure you go and see the doctor. Hear what the doctor will say. They may need to remove that lump and take it to the lab for what we call histology. So when they take it there, that is when they will detect maybe it is cancerous or it's not cancerous because it's not every lump that is cancerous in the breast. Some are benign. We call it benign. The ones that are not cancerous, we, call, we say they are benign. And the ones that are cancerous, we say, okay, those are the cancerous ones. But you can't know until they take them you know to the lab to test so in case just try and follow up even if they are if, if even if you have if they remove that make sure you follow up with your doctor tell them let them do the histology because some are just missed you know like that the person would have done you know what the person is supposed to do you went to the hospital the uh, the, the the lump was removed but was not taken for histology that means um, the, the process was not taken further and before you know it, it may be a cancerous cells, uh, you know, a cancerous, a cancerous uh, lump. Then mammogram is also important. They are part of the test that we should do too, as women. Mammogram, breast scan, all those ones that we have to detect, you know, uh, if there is any problem with the breast. Then the cervix too is also very important. Cervical cancer is one of the leading cause of death in women. But I usually say that that cancer is, is um, how do I say it, is, is, a, is a coward. You know, in Yoruba, we say, Ojo, is it because if it can be detected early, that could just be the end of the whole problem. You understand? Because uh, um, in, in cervical cancer, any, we usually say that any woman that is sexually active, should go for what we call pap smear test. Pap smear test is a test that you use to detect any abnormality that is going on in the cervix before it develops to, uh, to cancer. So why are we stressing sexually active women? We are stressing sexually active women because there is a virus. The, the virus is called human papilloma virus. We have different strains. Human papilloma virus 16 and 18. It is sexually transmitted and it has been implicated as, you know, a causative factor in cervical cancer. Like I think 70% of cervical cancer are, you know, related to human papilloma virus and is sexually transmitted. So because it's sexually transmitted, we ask all the sexual, every woman that is sexually active, either you are sexually active now 
or you've been sexually active in the past, it is good to go for the pap smear test so that it can be detected on time, treatment can be done on time, then the prevention, then one will be able to prevent cancer of the cervix. Then for our men, because I know that we have a mixed audience, you know, and they, you know, it's a global family. So for our men, the prostate-specific antigen too is also very important. This one increases in some cases of prostate cancer. But if it is detected on time, there are, you know, and if it is detected on time by your doctor or the, you know, the medical personnel that is attending to you, we know what and what to do. But it's just part of the normal screening that men also need to do. So that is on uh, the, uh, the, the PSA, we call it PSA, um, prostate specific uh, antigen. So I just um, want to talk a little. So you have all other tests that we can do as well. In fact, as little as urinalysis, just win inside, you know, a bottle and you take it to, you know, to, to the lab for investigation. It tells you a lot about your kidney function. For instance, if they say that there is protein in the urine, you know, it, 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 it sends a signal, you know, to a doctor. It sends a signal to the person that is saying if there is protein. For instance, for pregnant women, if uh, they do urinalysis, if they test their urine and they say there is protein, you know, it's telling you something. Immediately you want to know what the blood pressure of the woman is. Then you're already thinking, is this woman having hypertension in pregnancy? Is this hypertension? Is it developing to what we call preeclampsia or eclampsia? Eclampsia is when you have raised blood pressure, um, protein in the urine, and the woman is convulsing. It's common in pregnant women. So even pregnant women too, they should do all the necessary medical screening during pregnancy, ranging from uh, your blood pressure is very important, your blood sugar too is very important. We have what we call gestational diabetes. That is, the woman is not the woman is not uh, is not diabetic before, but for the fact that the woman is pregnant, the woman becomes diabetic. So most of the time, you may not be able to detect that until a test is done. Then another important test again for pregnant women. As a pregnant woman, when you are carrying a baby, you must know your blood group. It's very important. Are you all positive? Are you all negative? Because if a, if a woman is all negative and you deliver a baby that is all positive, for instance, if as a woman I'm all negative and my husband is all positive, if I, deliver, if I get pregnant, my baby can be all positive or be all negative. She can take the blood group either from me or from my husband. So if my baby is all positive and I'm all negative, there is an injection that I'm supposed to take if my baby is O positive. They call it Rogam and TD, Rogam injection. And you need to take that within 72 hours of birth. You are taking the injection not because of the baby that you have delivered, but because of another pregnancy that is coming. Because the baby with O positive would have, would have sensitized you that you are O negative. And if there is nothing to counter the effect, the other pregnancy that the woman will have will be affected. So it means that the woman has to screen, her blood needs to be screened so that we know if she's O negative or we know if she's O positive so that she can take the antirogam, you know, injection in order to prevent the problem. So all those things, we need to take it, we need to put them in mind as women, as men, as a... Uh, as um, you know, as youths, as um, children, then blood your, your, your children blood group too is also very important. Check for their blood group, check for their genotype. Some people don't get to do their genotype until when they want to get married. After they have started the courtship, and the courtship is like, and the courtship is about four years. That is when maybe it's, maybe they request for it from the church, and the church tells them, okay, go and do your blood group so that we know. If this person is not SS, if this person is not AS. And it's at that point that they will go to the lab to check. And the lady is AS, the man is AS. So at that point, what can you do? A relationship, you know, that has been for four years, 
it, it can be heartbreaking. So it's good to do those things on time. As soon as your child, I could remember then in UCH, as soon as your child is um, taking the last um, immunization at nine months, there is a side lab that you go to. They take the blood sample, they check the genotype, they check the blood group. So at that point, by nine months, you already know the blood group of that child. You already know. So you'll be able to tell your child, you are AS. So you cannot marry a man that is AS. So immediately, the child gets it in her head. And when the guy is proposing to her, she asks the guy, what is your genotype? It's better to settle things at that level than after like a long year of courtship, you get to know that the man is AS. And at the end of the day, you have to break each other's, you know, each other's heart just to make things work. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that prevention, let's, let, let, let's, uh, let, let's you know, embrace preventive medicine. Let's go for medical checkup. Let's go for medical screening. Then lastly, I would like to talk about um, our mental health. It's very important. Mama has told us a lot about this at the beginning of this session. And I'm so excited about all she has told us. Her mental health is, is very, very important. We have a lot of cases of depression, you know, all over the world now. And it's, you know, it's, it's a big burden, you know, for people. And probably this might be due to the fact that, you know, we don't protect our mental health enough as we should, you know, as a man, as a woman, as children, as a youth, you know, and so on. So what happened, uh, Mama talked about stress, that the way we should learn how to manage our, our stress. Stress management is very, very important. In fact, in case you, you feel that you cannot find a way of managing your stress yourself, I think it's good to seek for, you know, an opinion from, uh, from a counselor or a professional that can lead you on how to, to manage stress. The problem about stress is that I'm sure some of us would have heard of what we call uh, stress hormones before. There are some hormones that are produced in the body. We call them stress hormones. There are about three or more. But the main one that I want to talk about, we have one, there is adrenaline, we must have heard about that. We call it fight and, fight and flight hormone. Then there is the one we call cortisol. Cortisol is also a stress hormone. These hormones, they are produced in the body, and when they are in the you know, normal level, when the level is like, is in a moderate level, they have the function that they perform. For instance, the cortisol uh, helps to reduce inflammation, you know, in the body, and it, it, it's also produced when we exercise. But what, what the cortisol does when we exercise is to take glucose to the, blood, to the body cells then and to increase our heart rate so that the heart can pump blood to every part of the body. But when your body is subjected to stress continuously, continuously, I saw something on somebody's status today, you know, and um, it strikes me. The person said that happiness starts from you. It is not from your job. It's not from your money. It's not from your relationship. It starts from you. So that means that to be happy is like a choice for you. You decide to be happy. And when you are happy, you release a lot of stress. Because we are not talking about only physical stress. Emotional stress is even worse sometimes than physical stress. So when you are stressed up continuously, these hormones are being produced. Cortisol is being produced and the level is, you know, becoming very high in the body and when the when the level of cortisol is high and you have the stress is chronic you know you've been you've been through stress you know for a very long time you are not managing it and it's you know it's chronic it has now been for a very long time we it can lead to some you know problems and some diseases it can cause fatigue continuously you can be complaining of tiredness every time i'm just tired every time i don't know what to do every time i'm just tired you know, chronic stress can cause that. Chronic stress can cause persistent headache. One can keep, you know, having headache every time you take paracetamol, you take anti-malaria, the headache is not going. Irritability, you can become very irritable, you know. 
just you know you are just irritable when you are going through chronic uh, fat or chronic stress you can have that it can lead to loss of libido it can lead to erectile dysfunction you know loss of libido you are not able to you know to perform some uh, reproductive functions it can even lead to like it can lead to depression it can lead to irregular menstrual period because all these are being controlled by hormone as well so stress management is very very important we need to manage our stress you know stress management the topic is like a big topic on its own and that can just be for any other day but let's just let me just quickly go through how you can manage you know how you can try and manage your stress mama has actually talked about it today and part of what mama told us at the beginning of this session they are really scientific and you know i'm going to be buttressing that with like with some of the things i'll be saying you should learn to slow down and plan ahead when you plan ahead you won't be disorganized so you'll be able to manage situations before they become stressful so you plan ahead then you learn to slow down let's learn to slow down especially women and our men let's learn to slow down i can remember the video of uh, you know that's a small boy in lagos that told his mom mommy be coming down mommy calm down so i think it's just a message for us as women as men let's learn to calm down let's learn to slow down it's a way of uh, you know managing our stress then get good hours of sleep let's sleep when you are sleeping make sure you are sleeping especially women some of us we are sleeping but we are not sleeping you know you have slept for 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 for, for six hours but practically you've not even even slept for two hours thinking about our children thinking about our husband thinking about what thinking you know let's have a good sleep when we sleep let's know that we are sleeping then let's go your worries especially the ones that you can't do anything about let's go let, let's let it just go worry will not is not going to solve that problem so let's learn to let go of our worries let's take a break you know let go of your worries take a break laugh more let's laugh you know we should have a good sense of humor even sometimes you might be like an introvert like me an introvert like me who does not you know really talk and so but let's learn how to laugh the bible because um i'm a christian so i'm going to refer to the bible the bible says that a cheerful heart is good medicine that is in the book of proverbs so when we laugh some good hormones are released from the brain endorphin you can go check you will know go and check it endorphin is released so when we laugh is a good way of managing our stress then i've talked about being organized regular exercise too is also very good it allows you to you know but it, it, it also comes in in stress management so then try to ask for help help from people they said uh, uh, i think it's uh, my bishop said the cry for help is not a cry of weakness that you are crying for help that you are asking people for help does not mean that you are weak but you are wise because when you ask for help it helps you to reduce stress as well then try to you know to, 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 to try to to interact with people interact with people in your church or anywhere where you worship interact with uh, your family members interact with friends this is very important in letting out our stress stress is bad stress is not good when we are continuously stressed up it produces those stress hormones in the body and those hormones even the stress hormone cortisol can also suppress your immune system that is why sometimes when you have cold the doctor will tell you that it's because you are stressed up so you've had like you know the cortisol some of it is already like has reached like more than normal level in the body so you can have cold you can have some allergies you can have um, some easily one can contact some diseases some diseases that on a good day one will not have if your immune system goes down because that is what those stress hormones does cortisol suppresses the immune system and so sicknesses can easily come in so i think that um i should stop here for now and then listen to mama and listen to her questions <laughs> uh, 
fight so hard. Dr. Thank Julie, you. thank you so, so, so very much. Woo, you don't know how many lives you have saved sharing. And people have been making comments and all that. All of you know that there's no way I can treat everything today, skin problem and all that. Uh, but uh, some questions okay. came up and I jotted them down, Dr. Jumi. Um, number one, person said when she was, he or she was 10, she did her blood, whatever, and it was B plus. At 17, it was B minus. Why? So I'm just going to put out the questions. Okay, mommy. You might want to just jot them the next uh, 10 minutes or 12 minutes. Then, they are not sexually active. Do you need to do perhaps? Then, number three, can they have blood pressure? Number four, what is the genesis of fibroids? Number five, um, um, chest pain. This person has checked pain. And finally, mm -hmm. how do you know when your stress is chronic? Is it? Yes, I think so. I think I so. I <laughs> I'll try to respond to them. Uh, let me start with the person that said when she was um, 10 years, her blood, um, her blood group was B+. Plus. Then when she was um, 17 years, the blood group was B negative. I think uh, there was a mix-up somewhere. Probably from where the test was conducted because not every not um, not all centers do those tests very well so probably i don't know which one is right but i would just advise the person to go back and do it in a in a good center in a good center then probably do and uh, doing two good centers and then uh, and compare but it can be they can be saying different things it can either be B positive or B negative. So there is a mistake somewhere. And I think that should be rectified, you know, as soon as possible before it gets too late. So that is on the blood test. So somebody was acting, was asking, if you are not sexually active, do you still have to do pap smear? You know, I told us that... Uh, or oh. if you are a virgin... Because um, oh, if you, you know, it's, the, the main thing why you are doing that is for is to is um to detect the human papilloma virus, human papilloma virus in the in in the cervix. So, uh, but I think that because we can just say that okay, ninety percent of the cancer cells. Is ninety uh, percent of cervical cancer? I, I said I think I said seventy percent of cervical cancer is implicated in them um, um, in the HPV transmission. But some other things could also happen too at the level of the of the cervix too that may not be as a result of the human papilloma virus um, infection. So I think it's just a good good test for everyone to do, for every woman to do, to screen for any abnormality in the cervix. Oh. Yes, mommy, yeah. Even if it will not affect... Then the, the, third, the third question... Can yes! You have Ma, um, but if it can, a, 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 a little child can have high blood pressure, if there are some other pathologies, that, other pathologic changes that are taking place, for instance, in some cases of a an, an renal problem, if a child is having renal problem, the blood pressure can, can go up. That could be some of the signs, you know, of a problem with the kidney. So a child, a small child can have a high blood pressure too as well. When somebody talk about chest pain. Okay. What test? P A P. Yeah. Pap. P A P test. Pap smear. Pap smear. Okay, okay mommy. Um, somebody what talked You're about chest up. pain. Chest pain. There are different causes of chest pain. Different causes of chest pain. Even if you go to Google, 
and you Google causes of chest pain, you will see a lot. You will see some that will frighten you. So that is why usually I tell people, don't base your search on Google. Don't go online and start searching. If you search online, if you search causes of headache, they will give you all, all you know, different types of, in fact, they will go up to brain tumor. That is the cause of the headache you are having. So probably sometimes if you are not a medical person, you may not be able to filter it. You may not be able to know which is which. So from my you know, experience in clinical practice, I've seen a lot of cases of chest pain. Some could just be as a result of, um, it could just be like a chest wall pain. We call it, um, we call it coastal chondritis in medicine. That it could just be a chest wall pain that after some time it just resolves on its own and then the person becomes better again. But every case of chest pain should be well investigated. You know, should, when you're having a chest pain, don't just assume that it's just a chest pain because sometimes too, it could just be as a result of some cardiac problems too as well. So don't just take it for granted. See your doctor to know which one is the cause of your, you know, your, your chest pain. Maybe you might need to do a chest test ray, you might need to do, you know, every other test to know what is actually causing it. Then somebody talked about um, genesis of fibroid. Ma? No, somebody talked about, somebody yes, talk, you were talked about fibroid. Maybe you will need to and what causes it? And usually, fibroid is a, a, just like a, like a growth. Just like a growth in the womb. Sometimes the causes might not be known, but sometimes you can talk about uh, risk factors. It might have risk factors or disposing factor, not really like the cause. But as I usually tell some people, I'll say fibroid is, it is very common. If you take um, if you take like hundred women, you take them to scan them, you know, you can discover that like ten out of the hundred has you know a fibroid, one fibroid mass or the other. But the main thing is when it is symptomatic, is it giving any symptoms? Is it causing an irregular bleeding? Is it making the woman to bleed, you know, more than it should, or is it causing? any issue with fertility you know at that stage you need to you need you, you need to see you know the doctor you need to see your doctor and then just plan ahead what to do about it but most of the time some of these fibroid masses are just there they are quiet and sometimes they don't cause any problem until the woman gets to a postmenopausal um stage Okay. okay. If you are already vaccinated of HPV, are you still pro-cancer? What age can a child? Because I can't say the age Between 9 and 12, 12 man. Or nine, So it's just, just like, so taking the vaccine is not, uh, if you have taken the vaccine, it's not like, um, how do I say it? It's not a substitute for screening. Yeah, the fact that you have taken the vaccine is not a substitute for screening. So it's good to still do both. And it's good to take the vaccine if you are within that age range and then still do the normal cervical screening that you need to do. Okay. Um, apart from miracles, medically, can AS turn to AA? I believe in miracles and I've seen things happen. There's nothing the answer is no, do. mommy. But medically, medically the, answer is no. the answer is no. But I believe okay. in okay. the divine. And I know okay. there is there is supernatural. I know there is nothing but cannot do. But okay. medically, AS cannot turn to AA. Medically. Can is this advisable to operate fibroids? Mm. 
as a single person? Hmm. As a single person, I think if the fibroid is not giving any symptom, if it's not giving any problem, then depending on the size, because sometimes some fibroids are big, they, they, are, they, they are big in size and might be obstructing, you know, some areas of the womb, some areas of the uterus. Probably, I think, uh, the pet, so that it won't cause problem, the fibroid can be operated. But if it's a small, if it is small and it's not causing any problem, it's not causing any issue, I think it's just better to allow the um, sleeping dog to lie. Can a B positive woman marry B positive marry or negative? Man? Yes, there is no there is no problem about that. There is no problem. No problem about that. Exactly. What was the cause of? Well, like I told you, I cannot. We can't answer all somebody these questions said, tonight. Somebody said, uh, "What can be the uh, burning, will... burning sensation in the palm and the feet?" I can see that those could be part of menopausal symptoms. We couldn't go to menopause this night and that is another very important topic mm -hmm. for women so body sensation on the palm on the feet can be part of the signs of menopause in women yes 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 can yes. fibroid grow back yes it can <laughs> at least oh my god we can't answer all the questions. There is a medical term here. What's the cause of uh, yeah. adenomyosis? Adenomy adenomyosis is um, part of the uh, problem in the uterus, like an abnormal growth in the lining of the uterus. And a lot of things could be, could be the cause, could be the, the a risk factor for adenomyosis, you know? So it's like an abnormal growth in the lining of the uterus. Okay. Yes, mommy. See that I'm not a doctor. <laughs> Adenomyosis. Ooh! Oh my God! This Thank is where you, we're going to the cutting to know. What a blessing. Definitely, you know. Thank I always you. say this. <laughs> finish it, so you will always come back. <laughs> it depends on individual. It depends. It depends. depends. On individual. What's the implication of dense breast? I think we need to solve. Yes, we'll come back when we want to talk yes, about menopause, cancer, and all that. Thank you Thank again you. for Najumo and Lade Nola. You've been a blessing the one hour. And I thank all my global tribe, Japan, Australia. You know, I see all of you. May the Lord bless you. I'll see you again by God's grace next week, Tuesday, same time on Instagram. Just know that, as I always do, this will be saved, and you'll be able to watch it on my YouTube channel. I'm sure beginning from tomorrow, if not tonight. Once again, thank you, Doctor CS Delivery and all that. Don't worry, we'll talk about. <laughs> we'll talk about. Just keep your questions. One thank of these you, we'll Talk about our health again. God bless you. Have a fantastic night. I'm enjoy the cold yes, in. England because my husband told me it's very cold there and I told you to send some here. Thank you, Ma. Thank you. Bye. Please have a blessed Thanks. night.